nebula, stardust, cosmic mist or whatever you want to call it. In this Skybox series episode, I will show you how to create this effect using Sky Shader. For the video, I will be using Star Sky Shader as template from the previous Star Filled episode. Link is in the description. For the tutorial, I will be using Godot 4.3 and I'm also using an add-on called Shader Loop. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get shading. Alright, in my scene, I have this World Environment node. In the Tone map, I'm using Aces mode and I've enabled this Glow. Then in the Sky section, I'm using this Nebula Sky material, which uses the shader I've talked about earlier. I've created this shader in my previous video and also optimized it in the shader optimization video. You can check them out if it sounds interesting to you. Now as you can see I already have a bunch of uniforms and for the video I will be creating some more as well. So first let's organize them in the respective sections. To create a section go group uniforms stars then at the end I will add a closing group uniforms. In the inspector I will have this nice stars section. Pretty cool. Now to create the nebula effect, I will use a noise texture, so let's create a uniform. First let's create a new section, group uniforms, nebula, group uniforms. Then here go uniform sampler 2D, nebula texture. And one more sampler 2D, so I will just duplicate this and call it nebula mask. In the inspector, I will have this new nebula section and in there I will have these two texture slots. For the nebula texture, select new noise texture 2D. And the skybox is pretty big, so let's just increase the texture width and height to 1024. Then uncheck this generate MIP maps. I don't need any MIP map levels. Then check this seamless option, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then you will have this new option, Seamless Blend Skirt, which determines distance over which to blend the edge seam. I will set it to 0.5, but you can obviously experiment here. Then in the noise slot, select new Fast Noise Light. You will have this nice noise. Now you are more than welcome to experiment here. I will select the noise type to Cellular, set the frequency to 0.0065, in the fractal section, set lacunarity to 3. In cellular section, set distance function Euclidean squared and return type distance to multiply. And you will have this nice noise texture. For the mask texture, I will do the same thing. New noise texture 2D, width and height 1024, uncheck MIP maps, check seamless. Blend skirt 0.5, noise new fast noise light, noise type cellular, frequency 0.005, lacunarity 3, gain 0.6, and return type distance to multiply. Once I'm satisfied with the texture, in the color ramp slot select new gradient. Then I will move this first pin at around 20%. What this does is, in the texture any values less than 0.2 will be all black and rest will be interpolated between 0 to 1 based on this gradient. Then I will create a new pin around like 75% by clicking on it and drag it around 30%. Once again you can experiment here. Finally in our shader let's create a new function to sample the textures. So written type will be float nebula and it will take UV as an input and another vector to for speed to pan the texture. Let's sample the first texture. So float nebula equals texture. Then texture to sample is nebula texture with UV plus speed and then just take any single channel. Similarly, let's sample the mask texture, so float mask equals texture, then this time nebula mask with UV minus speed, and I want to halve the speed here, so 
speed multiply 0.5 then take any single channel then for now I will just return the nebula for now let's visualize it so in the sky processor after the for loop vec4 nebula equals vec4 of 0 then nebula equals vec4 of let's call our function nebula then let's just pass in the uv and for now pass 0 as speed then go fog equals nebula and it doesn't look so cool looks very repetitive and at the horizon looks way cluttered to fix it let's create two uniforms uniform float nebula scale equals 0 0.01 and uniform float nebula blend equals 0 0.1 and I want the blend to go from 0 to 1 so let's set the hint hint range 0 to 1 and the step size will be 0 0.01 then in the sky processor let's deal with repetitiveness first so here simply multiply UV with nebula scale and it looks much nicer now let's deal with the horizon part so I will go nebula.rgb multiply equals smooth step of zero nebula blend and absolute of i direction dot y it will declutter the horizon and i can adjust it from the inspector our i direction dot y goes from one to minus one in y axis and i'm using absolute of that then smooth step will return zero if this value is less than zero returns one if it is greater than nebula blend and any value between these two will be interpolated if you want to know more about smooth step i have an entire video about it do check it out now i know that you have a burning question that digvijay you are not using the mass texture at all good catch the purpose of mass texture is to make this noise more interesting so in the nebula function i will multiply nebula with mask so nebula multiply equals mask and it only looks a little bit interesting don't worry that will change in a bit then i would also like to control the intensity or power of the texture for that let's create a new uniform uniform float nebula power equals 1.5 then in the nebula function nebula equals power of nebula raised to nebula power here the power function will simply darken the values which are less than one as we increase the power but now i cannot actually see the nebula at all so let's tweak the power value pretty cool now this is only one layer of our nebula texture let's add multiple layers for that let's create another uniform uniform integer this time nebula layers equals 3 then in the sky processor let's create a for loop for float i equals 1 i less than equals nebula layers i plus plus then my nebula layers is an integer so need to convert it to float then in the loop instead of equals go plus equals and now the noise simply gets brighter because they are stacked on top of each other to prevent that I need to pass some different UVs in the nebula function and now I also want to move the texture so let me declare a few variables here you can also make them uniform as well float lacunarity equals 0.1 and float speed equals 0 0.004 in the loop I will cut this then I will go back to ST and ST is the alternate way of writing UV equals paste our code and multiply it with lacunarity then simply pass ST here for the speed I will go time multiply speed 
Lastly, let's change lacunarity and speed value. So lacunarity multiply equals 2.5 and speed multiply equals 1.002. Again, you can experiment with these numbers. In the inspector, let's just adjust the scale and power. And it starts to look a lot better. One final thing is, I want to pan the texture in the opposite direction for each iteration. For that, I can go speed multiply, sine of modulo of i and 2 minus 0 0.5. So here the modulo function returns the remainder of i divide by 2. So basically if i is an odd number, I will get 1, otherwise I will get 0. Then I am subtracting 0 0.5. So the result will either be 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.5. Then the sine function will return minus 1 if we pass negative values, returns 1 if we pass positive values and for 0 it will return 0. So basically, speed will alternate between positive and negative value for each iteration. Alright, now is the time to color our effect. For that, I will use a hue function from the add-on called shaderlib. To use that function, we need to include the shader include file that contains that function. But here, we already have it included. Then in the sky processor, let's go float hue shift equals 0.05 then in the loop nebula.rgb multiply equals hue of vec3 of 1.1.1 1. 1. 1. hue shift multiply nebula then take any channel multiply i direction dot x then pass 1 in the final parameter U function will shift the U of this color this much amount and the last parameter determines whether to use normalized values or degrees. One means use normalized values. Then let's also change the U shift value. So U shift multiply equals let's say 1.865. Then I can also fine tune the colors. Let's create another uniform to do that. Uniform Vec3 Nebula Color Adjust equals Vec3 of 1. And I'm not using the hint source color because I would like to go beyond the value of 1. Then in the for loop, I will go nebula.rgb multiply equals nebula color adjust. This way, I can filter the red, green, and blue channels. In the inspector, I can adjust the values. Now keep in mind that the more layers you have, the shader will become more performance intensive, so use it sparingly. Finally, at the bottom of the skybox, we only have the reflection of the top part. I don't really like that, so let's just rotate the top part slightly so it doesn't look identical. For that, I will use rotate UV function from shaderlib. So in the for loop, after calculating the UVs, go st equals rotate UV of st. Then the center will be 0 0.5. Then the rotation will be, let's say, 124 degrees. Then pass true. So this will rotate the UVs from this point around this much degrees. But it will rotate the entire thing. To only rotate the top part, I will go 124 multiply ceiling of i direction dot y multiply 0 0.5. Ceiling function will give me the nearest integer which is greater than the value I passed. So for positive values I will get 1 and for negative values I will get 0. As a result only top part will be rotated. And I have a nice nebula effect. Awesome! And that's the video. Now my initial idea was to make this as a volumetric fog shader but that was absolutely tanking the FPS so I've chosen this route. However, if you want me to cover fog shaders, do let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, now is the best time to hit that like button and if you're new here, subscribe for more videos like this. That's it from me and I'll see you in the next one.